I was making some pink sauce and pickles pasta and wanted some seasoning as a finishing touch. But I accidentally grabbed a jar of catnip thinking it was oregano and, and didn't notice until I woke up from a nap to meowing outside my window. And when I opened the door, I saw 40 cats outside my house and I thought it was the greatest day of my life until I met this musty stray who smelled like Fritos and he showed me this really cool trick called bite. And I thought, well, now I have rabies. So I scrambled to find someone to pee on the wound to neutralize it. But after that didn't work, I realized that's what you do for a jellyfish thing and not rabies. So I went to the pharmacy to see if I could find some medication for the bite, but I'm in Japan, so I just translated some medications and found this one that Google Translate says was rabies control. So I took it, and after a couple hours, my stomach started growing, and I realized it was babies control. And I was like, oh my god, the birth control malfunction made me fucking pregnant. Nah, I'm not pregnant, I just gained 10 pounds, because I've been waiting for a year, but today I finally got a PS5. Anyways, today I bought a PS5 off of this sketchy guy online, because I really wanted one, but they're sold out everywhere. So I messaged him and asked how much money he wants for it, and he replied saying he accepts payment in other forms, and I was like, he must mean Bitcoin. So I went upstairs and grabbed my mom's credit card and bought 200 Bitcoins, which apparently was a lot of real world money, but whatever, because I needed that PlayStation. So I went outside and hopped in my car and drove over to the address he gave me, and when I was pulling up, I got really scared, because the address was a hut made out of sticks in the middle of the forest and as i got closer i saw the ps5 on the ground so i went over to grab it but that's when i heard a voice say hey there wanna show me your toes so i grabbed the box and ran to my car and just barely escaped with my life and my ps5 and when i finally got home i couldn't wait to open it just to see that this man didn't sell me any ps5 he sold me a printer station 5 Hey y'all, I'm currently in the vegan teacher's basement, so I thought I'd give you a house tour. Here's a dining room table. It has Don't Eat Cats painted on it. Um, just a reminder if you're gonna do that today. Here are two fly swatters, which, um, I don't know if you can have that as a vegan, but whatever. Upstairs is the studio. Uh, that's her exercise bike. She also streams here by putting her phone on a tripod, which is a wooden block from Home Depot with three nails in it. And this is her schedule, which starts at 5 in the morning to wake up and eat blueberries and chia seeds. Anyways, kitchen tour! This is me, by the way. This horse, um, the horse's name was Ben. Doesn't mean I want to ride you, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> her fridge has, like, 4,000, uh, vegetables and, uh, a pepperoni stick, which is really interesting. Um, don't ask any questions about it, otherwise- Actually, stop filming for a second. Okay. Anyways, welcome to the backyard. Here's some uh, propaganda and military-grade security systems that fire tactical rounds if it sees you eating meat. And that's the tour of the happy vegan home that I'm so happy to be in the basement of. <laughs> Today I made a DIY North Korean driver's license by taking a picture with my iPad and then I googled North Korean IDs and slapped my face on it. And I made it look all pretty by crossing this guy's name off and giving myself a fake name. But I didn't do this so I can get into a club or anything. I did it so that every day I can print a new one and change my birthday to today's date so I can get free stuff every single day like a Starbucks drink or make people be nice to me. Anyways, I first tested my ID at Olive Garden and the waiter got the whole restaurant singing happy birthday to me. Happy but more importantly, I got a big old cannoli for free, baby. Anyways, next I went to Cheesecake Factory And I showed my waitress my ID Thinking she would give me, I don't know, a cheesecake slice At Cheesecake Factory But when she came to the table, she had all these cheesecake slices And what did she give me? A bowl of berries And I was like, oh, okay, I guess But then she dropped the bill off and charged me $8 for the strawberries When all I wanted was a slice of cheesecake for free Because they were like $10 So basically fake uh, North Korean IDs don't work At Cheesecake Factory I was at the dentist getting a piece of road removed from my mouth because last week I was on a leisurely walk when I saw a piece of chocolate on the ground and I was like, oh, a dog could eat that and get sick and also free chocolate. So I popped it in my mouth, no questions asked, only to discover that it wasn't chocolate, but was in fact tar from a road that they were paving. So anyways, they were taking it out when I saw something weird on the TV screen. It was like hypnotism or something. I could barely stay awake again. Next thing I knew, I was frolicking through a field of flowers while Gummy Bear played in the disc. <gasps> All of a sudden, I woke up in the middle of nowhere. My mouth felt really funny. I opened up my mouth to see that they had stolen all of my teeth. I fell to the ground and cried as I realized I'll never be able to eat tortilla chips or smile ever again. In that very moment of despair, a meteor landed right in front of me, sending chunks flying. Out of curiosity, I picked one up and it sent me back in time to five seconds before. So, I picked up a piece of time travel rock, popped in my mouth, and next thing I knew... <laughs> <laughs> 
So my dad loves mangoes. So for Christmas, I got him a single mango from Walmart as his Christmas present. But I couldn't just wrap it because it would be obvious that I got him a mango like everyone else does for Christmas. So I grabbed my wrapping paper and I wrapped it as something completely different. Then I put it under the tree. But a few weeks had passed and it started to smell really bad. And when I checked it, the mango had molded. So I had to throw the whole freaking present out and wrap a brand new mango. But I had run out of wrapping paper. So I got in my car and I drove back to Walmart and I found a tube of basic wrapping paper. And then I pretended it was a sword and I was swinging it around, but I accidentally killed a minion. Anyways, then I was bored in line, so I screamed into it like a horn, and I said, Arby's, we have the meat! Anyways, I got home, and I cut up the mango, I grabbed a random DVD case, and I put all the mango slices in it, but my dad's cat tried eating it. Ugh. And then I wrapped the Lego Star Wars for Xbox 360 disc case, and put it under the tree. And when I woke up this morning on Christmas, I gave it to him. What the I went to Walmart today to buy some Ed Sheeran merch, aka cabbage, because that's probably what he smells like. But when I grabbed my cabbage and went to go pay, I didn't realize I was in the makeup section trying to pay for a cabbage. And they didn't know how to ring up my cabbage by any freaking ways. The cashier girly dropped my cabbage. And I had to pick it up off the ground and it was kind of musty looking. But regardless, I left the store and walked home with it. And I was about to start munching on it when it slipped out of my hands and dropped again. And my little cabbage baby started rolling down the hill and I eventually caught up to it and it looked beat up. But I picked it up and took a crunchy cabbage bite and decided it would be a good movie snack. So I I brought my cabbage to the movie theater and it was all fun until I remembered I was watching The Quiet Place. And you know what wasn't a quiet place? My insides after eating Walmart cabbage off the ground. It was brewing like kombucha mixed with dynamite in my stomach and I had to leave and go home because it was dead silent in the theater and everyone heard my stomach grumbling up. I'm in North Korea right now because last week I was just making some delicious corn dog sushi in Japan and before I could take a bite I heard the nuclear missile warnings go off because Kimmy Jong-un was having a hissy fit and I spilled my corn dog sushi because of him but as I was hiding underneath the table about to be vaporized that's when I realized North Korea is only two hours away so I bought a Kit Kat because Kim Jong-un needs to take a freaking break and a ticket to North Korea so I can tell him to stop doing that anyways I went to the airport and the plane was either on fire or someone just had a vape but anyways once I landed I immediately got on this bus and the soldiers boarded the bus and checked my documents and then I was sent through this underground tunnel underneath the border and then I emerged at Kim Jong-un's palace And it was pretty cute for a warmongering dictator I walked up to the gate and gave it a good old knock, but no one was home I guess so I was just walking around when I heard a security alarm go off And I scrambled to find a place to hide So I ducked into this cubby hole and hid there until they were gone And then I snuck out into the bushes and spent hours trying to return to civilization and I ate some blueberries that weren't blueberries <laughs> but Hours later I finally found my way out and decided to give up on world peace and just eat the Kit Kat because I was hungry Sorry Kimmy, stop, stop I was laying in the ground trying to get a bee to bite me so that I could become one of them and pee honey and then sell it and become rich. But all I got was a lump and an allergic reaction. But as my throat was closing up, a genius idea came to my head. People buy things that belong to celebrities all the time, and the one time I sold my own hair, I got $20. Now, I don't want to go bald, but what I can do is scam. So I decided to sell Zendaya burps. I grabbed every container in my house and burped in hundreds of containers, and in an hour, I had millions of dollars worth of product. I set up my website, and the burps were flying off the shelves. I finally had enough money to buy my dream purchase on Amazon. So I ordered some uranium, hoping there would be enough to build my own nuclear power plant so that I could live on a deserted island forever. I was waiting and waiting for my package and I started getting worried. My mailman always loses my packages and uranium starts to decay if it's not held carefully. And eventually it'll de- Okay, so I don't think I'm going to the island. I was drinking a vanilla bean frappuccino for the fourth time today because I found out you can get anything free from Starbucks if you make 365 different fake IDs with different birthdays for every day of the year. So each day I go to a different Starbucks and show them my ID and tell them it's my birthday. And they give me a free treat that would usually cost four kidneys. But sometimes when I pull up, they tell me they don't do free birthday drinks, but... They don't know I know this trick. I actually go dumpster diving after hours where they throw away all the garbage and Starbucks employees that want to form a union. And there's usually one or two uniforms in there. So I got this one, which had uh, just a little blood stain. So whenever they deny me a birthday drink, I simply rip my jacket off and show them my employee uniform. And then they just let me go make whatever I want for myself for free. And it almost always works, but when it doesn't, and they say we've literally never seen you at this location before, why do you, why do you have blood on your uniforms? I stay calm because I remember they don't know I know this trick. I put on a little mask and say, Okay, this is a fucking rubber. I was eating some raw chicken sushi when out of the corner of my eye, I saw a furry and then another furry. So I got up to see what was going on and followed them. And then there was 10 furries and 20 furries and hundreds of furries. And I realized there was a whole furry convention at the mall I was at. But um, then I remembered I just didn't pay at the restaurant. And I heard them say on the intercom. In the Peter, the police would like a bird with you. And I was like, Jesus Christ, I need to get out of here. But these furries were everywhere. And I tried to sneak into this dark warehouse, but there was a rave going on. 
on inside, so I found a door to the outside, but it was raining and had no exit and no hope until I saw someone's left behind fursuit on the ground with some stains in it. But I had no other way to escape, so I put it on to try and blend in and re-enter the mall and saw so many horrifying things and still couldn't find the exit and was getting actual heat stroke, so I decided to just turn myself in. So I went up to a cop and said, I'd like to turn myself in, and it was a damn Zootopia cop! So I just bolted out of that lawless wasteland and jumped over furries to find a fire exit and made it out and stripped out and threw my suit in the river! I use my mom's Facebook marketplace for buying clothes and organs sometimes, but today I saw that Taylor Swift's private jet was selling for $1,000 because she got in trouble for flying them every single day or something. But I thought, I'll take it, and I messaged them and hurried to the bank to take out $1,000 in cash. And I brought it to the address, which was her own airline hangar, and when I arrived, I saw the plane. And I took a bunch of pictures in front of it and then went through her makeshift security. But when I got there, there was a little party going on. And I was like, oh, fun. And I participated in the party, but then it got a little rowdy, and I asked, can I own this plane? still and it turns out some rappers bought it before i could and started filming the music video in it but i was still bitter from being outbid so i pulled the emergency latch and breached the airlock and now i have the whole plane to myself hey guys just got first class and they gave us free free orange juice free a little mask that come down and put you to sleep last weekend me and some pals and mr beast gathered around to sacrifice a giant minion for fun but after we killed it to death i was like now what and mr beast says dave is finally dead so is this stupid trend but i thought to myself that's kind of awkward because to me it wasn't a trend and I got a giant minion tramp stamp tattoo a few days before. And I was so embarrassed that I got in my car and drove around looking for a laser tattoo removal place, but the only one that I could find in my town went out of business when they accidentally cut someone's leg off. And it also looks like the back room. So I ordered a tattoo laser gun off of Sheehan. And when it arrived a week later, I got ready to use it after accidentally burning a hole in my eyeball. But I reached behind me and started burning it off, and it smelled like burnt chicken for about an hour. But I thought it was essentially gone. Until I was at Walmart a week later when I saw this lady drop her toe fungus medication. And when I bent down, to pick it up for her, the scar popped out, and she screamed and thought I had monkey pox, and I was like, shut the hell up, wordy ass bitch. let's see those toes you need to scream for. Today I woke up on Mr. Beast's 35 foot tall inflatable minion that I tried blowing up the night before with my lungs, but my asthma kicked in and I passed out. But anyways, last week he was like, hey Ben, can you make me the world's largest minion? But I hung up on him, he's not despicable enough, he's like the opposite, he's like philanthropicable. But he called back and I was like, he really is despicable, and I agreed to do it, and ever since then I have been making sure this minion is perfect. So I got the whole factory to line up and take turns blowing it up so I wouldn't be the only one passing out and I tried to fashion together a giant suit to fit him but I ran out of fabric and but finally he was ready the only problem was when I opened my trunk and tried to fit his body in it which usually it can fit a few of those he didn't fit so I had to ship him in a truck but I wanted to be along for the journey so I snuck in while the back door was open and rode in that boy across America until we finally stopped and I opened the door and hey uh, I, I got your minion Okay. Today I spent nine hours painting Doja Cat and it turned out so good that I decided to DM it to her. And she actually replied by saying it's terrific. And I was just in disbelief that she replied. So I screenshotted it as fast as I could and posted it on my story to show all my friends. But after she saw it, she DM'd me a picture of the front of my house and my birth certificate. And when I said, yeah, yes, it is Doja Cat, <laughs> I saw she mentioned me in her story. And, and when I looked, she had posted both of those images on her story. And, and I was like, Doja, why would you do that? And then she went live and was very angry at me. And the next thing I knew, there were people banging on my front door. And then one of them threw something through my window. And I had no clue what it is, so I slowly approached it. But when I got too close, it started to fill my room with gas. And I heard on her live stream, and she said, Careful of the tear gas, the tear gas. So I grabbed what I could and ran out of my house and saw a flyer on the telephone pole for witness protection. And I called them and had to throw away my passport and credit cards. And now I'm flying to New Zealand to start a new life. Thanks, Doja Cat. Today I was flying over North Korea and trying to sleep even though there was a baby screaming behind me because it shat itself. But what really kept me awake was a song started playing that plays in like all those plane crash TikToks. And then the plane started shaking and the seatbelt sign turned off. And the plane was shaking so much that it spilled water all over my no-no square. And I thought if this plane is going down, I'm not about to be found dead looking like I peed myself. So I snuck into the bathroom even though it said seatbelts on and I grabbed some paper towel and tried to dry it off but it was shaking so much that I just went back to my seat and that's when I realized the music was coming from the stupid baby behind me's iPad because it knocked its airpods off from sharding so aggressively so I tried to lean between the seats to turn it off but I couldn't reach it so I called over the flight attendant and asked if we could just throw the child out of the airlock but she didn't speak English and just gave me almonds so I peacefully lost my mind for seven hours and when I landed I saw the most nasty little sharder and chased after it because it left its iPad behind but when I touched it there was literal baby food on it and I 
dropped it and cracked the screen. And then I picked it up again to check if it was working and saw the lock screen and it jump scared me and I dropped it again. Whoops! <laughs> Today I texted my crush that I love her and want a relationship and I felt like throwing up until she replied with, I'm in Lisbon. And then she sent the um Portuguese flag, I think. I don't know, I'm not good at geometry. But anyways, I wanted to surprise her, so I booked the next ticket to Lisbon, Portugal. So I packed up my stuff and went to the airport and it was a 30 hour journey, but it was in the name of love. And when I landed, I realized I should probably get her something as a gift. So I walked into a store and came across these very interesting frozen feet in the freezer section. And I thought, mm, who would want to suck on feet? Oh, me. So I bought them and opened up the box and ate every last foot. And they tasted like strawberries. I don't know why I was expecting foot flavor. Not that that's what I wanted. But anyways, I got the bright idea to take all the popsicle sticks and make a little fun DIY bracelet out of them with hearts on it. So I did just that. And then the next day I was going to give my crush the bracelet. So I went to DM her and asked her to meet up and realized she said, I'm a lesbian. I'm a lesbian. I was scrolling through the deep web when I saw an ad for a GoFundMe to get the queen an air fryer before she dies. So I went to it and saw no one had donated. So I gave her $5 and went to bed. But when I woke up the next morning, I got an email that it was shut down by GoFundMe. And I knew the queen still needs an air fryer. So I packed my bags and went to the airport to book the next flight to London to bring her an air fryer that I bought for her. And after 10 hours, I landed and Ben was in the Big Ben. So I took the train to the Buckingham Palace where she lives. But when I got there, they had it gated off and I couldn't go in to see the queen so i found another entrance with a flimsy little fence that i slid under and then i popped over another fence but that triggered an alarm so i was running as fast as i could and i happened to drop the air fryer but i had to hide so i managed to find the queen's quarters and snuck in and i thought i was safe until i woke up on some cliffs on an island with nothing but a note on my arm that said please they won't let me air fry elizabeth i will save you Today I went to go see Billie Eilish at Coachella, but before she came on, there was this dude wearing a big sparkly onesie who opened for her that kept staring at me, and I was thinking to myself, what's up, do you have a staring problem, buddy? But anyways, he did a little dancey dance thing, and Shrek was in the audience and seemed to love it. But his cameraman kept getting in the way and then turned to me, and the next thing I knew, rewind that. He put me on the big screen, and I freaked out and went behind the cameraman and started unplugging random cables from his camera, and it turned off the video on the screen. But anyways, then Billie Eilish came on and kept invading my personal space and staring at me, and I was like, do celebrities never get taught that staring is rude? Why are you yelling at me? But then she did her little dancey dance and left the stage, and I took a golf cart home from Coachella, and when I woke up the next morning, I checked my phone to see a DM from Billie herself asking if I was at her show with a winky face, and I replied, no, silly Billie, here's a restraining order, leave me alone. And I went back to bed. Today, my Mima told me that she bought an NFT. And I was like, Mima, you just asked me if Mark Zuckerberg was my girlfriend. How do you know what an NFT is? So anyways, I was using one of those head massagers when I got a knock at the door. And when I answered, no one was there except for a box with a towel in it and some noodles. With a note that said, NFT, noodly fun towel. And it wasn't even fun. It was soaking wet in some mysterious liquid. And I was about to put it away in my closet when I got the idea that... I could actually make it into an NFT and get some use out of it. So I made some room and I took a picture of it and made it look all pretty and I minted it on Bubble House and made it free for a limited time. And I emailed her back and told her to go claim one before they're all gone. And even her bingo club can get one and even you. And we can play bingo together on Bubble House with my meme on her bingo group. Every day I bike past this fenced off neighborhood near me that's radioactive from a nuclear meltdown. But today I decided to explore it. So I went through a gap in the fence and after walking for about 10 minutes, I got to this mysterious door in the middle of nowhere so i did a little knock and let myself in and closed it behind me to be polite to the radiation anyways i went down the stairs and saw um some interesting artifacts that i was not exactly a fan of and i continued through the bunker and found a very inviting door that made me feel super safe which led to more stairs that had my knees cracking like rice krispies anyways i eventually got to this tunnel and some doors at the end of it that said danger do not enter but i went in because my middle name is danger just kidding it's emil and after i went through the door it closed behind me and i tried everything but couldn't open it up because it was locked so i decided to look around and see what my grave location was gonna look like thinking maybe it's a movie theater or a game room and i turned the lights on to see that it was an actual nuclear missile silo where they held the nukes and it went 100 feet down and now this is where i live i guess and my phone is now on one percent uploading this tiktok so if you see this that's the last time you're gonna Today, I door dashed some cooked goldfish from PetSmart because I was really hungry and they were only $3. So I placed the order and walked over to PetSmart to pick it up. But when I got there, I walked in and found the food pickup section and saw all the soon-to-be sushi swimming around in their little tanks that were 
right next to the not so swimming sushi. And that's when I realized maybe pet store food isn't the best move. But I was still super hungry, so I asked an employee if they have anything else to eat. But she told me if I want to act picky, they have rats for sale. So I opened up the rat fridge and... I couldn't do it. So I ended up buying some bugs for like $2, which was such a great and amazing deal. And when I got home, I was so hungry that I ripped open the bag of bugs and just told myself that this little grasshopper in my chopsticks is a Cheeto. So I popped it in my mouth and I felt movement. And I spat it out and it jumped out of the bowl. And I panicked and ran to the toilet. For the next three hours, I vomited up my insides. Today, I threw away all my electronics so I could join the Amish and live a simple life. But after about 10 minutes, I got really bored of harvesting wheat and apples and wanted to watch a good old YouTube video. But I didn't have any devices to watch YouTube on, so I obviously walked over to the YouTube headquarters. And when I got there, I managed to walk right in and I found an empty room with a TV in it so I could watch a few videos from my personal collection. Anyways, after I had cured my boredom, I left the room and raided the YouTube fruit counter and grabbed an orange and an apple and a DVD copy of the videos I watched. But when I finally got home, I realized I can't play this because I don't have a record player. <laughs> but I looked around my room and saw an old radio speaker thing and popped the CD in it just so I could listen to the audio and imagine the video in my mind. But when it started playing, it sounded like it was coming from outside my house and that's when I realized I had it set to broadcast. And I ran outside to see every radio in the vicinity was playing. <laughs> I wanted to go to Chili's today, but it was burning down. So instead, I went to go get sushi. But it was one of those places where it comes on a conveyor belt and you can take what you want, except for this piece of shrimp that refused to cooperate and wouldn't relate. But it's okay, because they also have a screen you can order from. So I ordered myself some crispy rice and it zoomed by faster than I could say, no officer, I had nothing to do with the Chili's burning down. Anyways, then I saw these nasty cubes that look like Minecraft gravel and I lost my appetite. So I put all the plates down the chute since I was done with them when I wondered what's actually in there. And it said, please don't insert hands or objects. But what did I do? Hit record on my phone and insert it into the slot, which was really smart because then I dropped it down into the chute and had to call over a waiter in shame and he told me that non-play items go out the garbage chute around back. So I went down this creepy corridor and finally found it and when I grabbed my phone and sat down to check what footage I had recorded, uh, I saw... I was trying to sell my kidneys on the black market when I got an ad for Shein Eats and apparently they sell food now. So I ordered some Mexican food because I was really hungry. But when it arrived, it came in what looked like a reused tissue box and it had a fragile sticker, but it was looking more like a burrito bowl at this point. Anyways, I compared it to the picture in the ad and it looked nothing like it. But the worst part is there was corn in it and I'm allergic. And I was beyond mad. So I looked at the shipping label and it said it was shipped all the way from China. So you know what I did? I was on that next flight to China. And after I boarded the plane next to the world's biggest Facebook model, with this suitcase. The food was actually pretty good, a little bit better than Shein's. But anyways, when I landed, I remembered it was the Olympics here in Beijing. So I decided to go to that instead of getting revenge on Shein. Happy Valentine's Day. Aww. Today, I went to the movie theater an hour early because I'm half Caucasian and I wanted to see the new Spider-Man for the 30th time. But when I sat down, I noticed that they had QR codes for their overpriced food menus. So I got the intrusive thought to quickly run home and change all the QR codes to moaning sounds. So when I got home, I designed a bunch of fake stickers and printed them off with QR codes. So when you scan them, they play this. Anyways, I grabbed the stickers and drove back to the theater and stuck them over the top of the original ones. And as people trickled into the theater and the movie started, and they started scanning the codes for the menu, I suddenly began to hear... And then people would quickly hide their phones and try and turn it off. And it got to the point where they had to stop the movie. So anyways, I left and went for sushi. And when I got there and sat at the table, I noticed that this restaurant also has QR codes for their menu. And I had some stickers left over, so I carefully placed them on top of the old QR codes. And then I looked back at the dude behind me as he scanned his and... Anyways, my sushi was very delicious, 9 out of 10. I was cleaning my room today when I found out that I just hit 10 million followers. And to celebrate, I wanted to give each and every one of you one dollar. Now, I don't have 10 million dollars, but you know who does? The bank. So I went over there and had the idea to R to the O to the B it, but quickly realized that I get too anxious simply going to Starbucks and ordering for myself without nearly peeing my pants. So walking into a bank to commit a crime is kind of out of the question. So my second idea was to make an Ed Sheeran disguise that is so convincing it looks like a deep fake. So I taped it to my face and I used this simple hack that works on any ATM machines where you can type in the number of the address where 
the ATM is, like 900 for example, and then it'll think it's undergoing maintenance and spread out all its cash. So I tried it and boom, I suddenly had $20,000. And I stopped at each and every ATM, punching the code, getting racks when I remembered they have security cameras. And even though I was disguised as Ed Sheeran, I wanted to be safe. So I gently disconnected the camera from the ATM and put it on the ground. And for the rest of the night, I'd never felt more alive, single-handedly taking down the greedy banks to steal from customers every single day. I was calculated, unstoppable, careful. And I did it all right under the police's noses. It became addicting. Every single ATM was like a new hit. And the money, oh, it was endless. Ed Sheeran had to go on live TV to say he wasn't the thief. And I had gotten away with it. Oh, wait, just kidding. They actually got me. Well, at least I still have money for bail. And I still have 10 million of you guys. Uh, wait. Um, I don't know if you've seen those comments on TikTok of beautiful women asking if there are any boys here, but today I remembered I am a boy, so I decided to investigate and saw that she was asking me to go to her bio. So I clicked the link in her bio and it instantly froze my iPad and I couldn't close the app or anything until a thing popped up asking for my phone number and credit card number to fix it. And so obviously I was like, thank God, a solution. So I grabbed my credit card from my wallet and typed it in, but then after I did that, my iPad fully shut off and started smoking. But I was like, okay, thank God they remember reminded me what my credit card number is. So I went to the Apple store to go replace all my Apple products that are now fried, but I got distracted and tried to make the wallpapers minions kissing, and I played some random rats dancing on all the iPhones. But then an employee yelled at me, so I fled with no iPhone, and now I'm trying to catch a bird so I can use it as a carrier pigeon to talk to people since I have no electronic devices left. Today I was in my car when I saw that the Amish were doing a pop-up shop, so obviously I had to go check it out because I don't believe that they're real. And when I pulled up to Simply Amish, I put my mask on because I don't want to give the entire call need the plague or something. And when I walked in, the employee was on a computer. And I was like, that's strange. They're not even supposed to have electricity. But I was walking around and at first it seemed like a really expensive furniture store. And I was like, damn, these Amish are going to be balling. But then I came across this door that was half open, which led to this scary basement that had all of these artifacts and paintings of Jesus. And then randomly a Rick and Morty Chia pet and some cards that I don't think are Amish appropriate. And then a Queen's Gambit board game, which... Oh, wouldn't that just be chess? Anyways, I felt the need to buy something so the Amish don't steal my organs. I got one of those popping toys where you put it on the ground and... Anyways, when I paid and got the bag, I noticed they slipped a key in it with a note saying, Need escape? And then some coordinates, which I looked up online and found out they lead to their colony. So I think they tried recruiting me and let me know if I should drive up there and join them. Today, I made a New Year's resolution to stop filling up my gas car with diesel just because it's cheaper. Because last time I did that, it started smoking when I was driving back from the gas station and then eventually burst into flames. So I've actually failed my first New Year's resolution because now I have no car to fill up with gas and it's 40 grand to repair the garage from fire. Damage. But I can't go to the bank because I don't have a car, so I walked in minus 40 degree weather to the car store and bought an electric car with all the money I made selling human organs off the black market. And it's really cute and it looks like a ladybug and I drove it home and found out I can plug it in with the same charger as my phone. So I grabbed my dog and we went on a little mini road trip for about 47 minutes when my car died because apparently you can't charge a car with a phone charger, so now I'm stranded in the middle of nowhere genuinely considering eating. My cheese it's that I brought as a snack while I wait for the tow truck to come. Obviously. I was putting my clothes in the dishwasher today because I broke my washing machine when I tried washing dishes in it last week because my dishwasher was broken in the first place. But anyways, I was in the kitchen and heard a snowball hit my window and when I looked out the window, my elderly neighbor Myrtle had put up a sign that said, check your mail. Now, as threatening as that seemed, I was so excited because her son owns the website where you watch corn with a pea. And in the past, she's given me like a thousand dollars at Christmas and a cute little picture of herself. So I went to the door and grabbed the card and when I opened it, I noticed that this time there was no gift which is fine and all, but also the picture she had sent me had some man's hand in the corner. And on the card, there was weird capitalization, so I highlighted the capital letters and it spelled HELP ME. And I started freaking out, so I drove over to her house, which was 50 feet away. Sorry, Greta Thunberg. And I was gonna save her from being choked, but um, when I got there, there was a van outside that said, uh, 50 Shades of Play. And I think that's what, what Myrtle's into. So now I'm traumatized. Today, I snuck an AirTag tracking device into an Ed Sheeran concert so that I could somehow stick it onto him to track him down because that's for the FBI. No. Anyways, randomly BTS opened for him and then Eddie was about to come on stage. So I had the genius idea to use an extra mask and fashion it into a slingshot so that when he performed, I walked up to the front of the stage, locked onto my target and bam, it flew through the air. And now I know there's no way of it sticking to him. However, they have to pack up the stage and it's probably gonna travel with him. So anyways, I saw Doja Cat and Lil Nas X and then left the concert concert and went home. Then the next morning, I was getting a reading on the AirTag Finder, and it said that he was in Las Vegas. So 
I flew to Las Vegas, and when I got to the airport, I thought I had already found him, but the thing is, I had a little bit of spicy grape juice on the plane, so I stumbled over to the man and shouted, Ed! And it was just a random man. So, um, yeah. I can only fall asleep to loud noises, so tonight I played some mukbang videos on full volume. And I also tried blasting that one girl who goes, ah! in all of her songs, and I was about to go to sleep like a baby when I heard a banging at my door, and I realized it was probably my insane neighbor who was literally named Karen. But when I got up and put clothes on and walked down to the door, there was nothing but an envelope that said, use these. So I brought it inside and opened it up, and she had sent me her nasty, crusty, earwax-covered AirPods that smelled like Fritos. And at first I was like, this is a human rights violation, and I'm probably diseased now until I saw the opportunity to suit up in a hazmat suit and rinse the brain caca off of them so that they look new, and then I could sell them to someone in my neighborhood for a profit. So I made a listing for like $150, and this one dude said he would buy it if I could meet him by the nuclear waste runoff. So I Ubered over there, and when I got there, I saw a bunch of money just sitting under some leaves, and I was like, that's not the safest way to do a transaction, but regardless, I just sprinkled the AirPods by it and then went home with $150 in like four different currencies. But it's okay, because I just ordered a bass-boosted speaker with the money from the AirPods. And when it comes I'm gonna have a big old party and blast music with a speaker courtesy of Karen. I woke up at 4 a.m. to borrow some of my roommate's peanut butter today, but when I opened it up, I saw he's been scooping it out the jar in a really strange way, which is really inefficient because there's just more surface area for it to dry out. But anyways, I wanted to make a peanut butter and spray cheese sandwich, but I felt like it needed some raspberries, so as I was taking the bread out of the fridge, I knocked out the raspberries. But I believe in the five-minute rule instead of the five-second rule, so I scooped them up and assembled my delicious sandwich, and I added the raspberries and a nice little squirt of easy cheese, and then I took a big old bite, but I started feeling really funny, and I thought I was having an allergic reaction to the peanut butter, but then I remembered the raspberries were not exactly the freshest, and I just ate an ounce of oh. So I grabbed my computer and tried to call poison control, but they were closed because of Thanksgiving, and I was like, damn, I'm really gonna puke my guts out because some white dudes wanted to have a feast after a mass genocide in 1621. So anyways, I decided I should probably write my will, and I opened up my notes app and said all my money and my plant collection and my life-size Zendaya cardboard cutout will go to my dog. Thank you and goodbye forever, I guess. My favorite thing to do right now is guess people's passwords of their social media accounts because I've actually managed to to successfully hack a few accounts. And I also enjoy changing some captions around without people noticing and tagging myself so people think me and Zendaya are besties. So today I managed to log into Sean Mendez's account and then I decided to DM some people some pickup lines like Olivia Rodrigo, which might have made me responsible for him and Camila Kabubu breaking up, but anyways, today I wanted to get into Instagram's Instagram account to, I don't know, post a picture of myself or something. And then I remember the guy who owns Instagram is Mark Zuckerberg. So when I tried logging in with a bunch of different passwords and none were working, I realized they kept asking me if I'm not a robot. And since old Marky Poo is a robot, I left it blank and then boom, I was in, baby. And I was stressed about what I should post to like 400 million people. So I just chose this random picture of me at the beach and now half a million people have liked it. So thank you, Mark Zuckerberg, for the validation.